there. Hello there. Welcome back. Today we are doing one of my favorite movies, American History X. I'm so excited about this because I've been wanting to show Holden for a very long time and we've just been putting it off because we wanted to do it for you guys. So we're gonna do it today. Um, Edward Norton's in this, Edward Furlong, Feruza Bulk, a lot of well-known actors, actresses are in this movie. I'm not gonna say much except for what I've already told Holden is that it's a little bit darker tone. It's definitely not not for children, difficult subject matter, but that's why I like it. It's an interesting movie. So what do you know about the movie? What have you heard? What are you excited about as far as going into it? We did a poll on Patreon as far as Jen showing me movies that she's seen that I haven't seen. We put a couple on that poll that both of us hadn't seen. So I think Gladiator actually won overall. So we will be doing that one. But this one won as far as what she has seen that I have not seen. There are a couple of movies kind of in the 90s, early 2000s that I've just, I've just skipped out on. I'm aware of American History X. What I know of it is Edward Norton has that swastika on his chest. I don't know, I could, Jen's making faces at me. So I don't know the extent of that. Jen showed me Training Day for the first time and absolutely loved it. Blew me out of the water with how good it was. So I'm guessing this one's gonna be in a similar vein. I don't know as far as like if Edward Norton's a Nazi, if he's a neo-Nazi or if he's a reformed Nazi. I will say one thing that's similar. So Jen and I used to work together at a hospital. We worked in finance at the hospital together. And I remember there was this one time, I don't know if you remember this, there was a patient that came in. This really tested my, my reaction, or I guess my, my Christian reaction. And what I mean by that is I went into this uh, patient's room with some paperwork, because I was that guy with paperwork and whatnot. And there was a patient there laying down and he had a swastika tattoo on his chest, like real life. And my reaction to that is just like, it's a mixture of things, because you don't, like I know that he has that in, in this movie and he's a white guy or whatever, but seeing it like actually in person, like, are you, a, are you like, are, it's like, are you for real? So it was this moment of like, he, I, I, he was really, really sick or hurt or something enough to warn him being inpatient in the hospital. And my job is to go in and help this guy that has the swastika tattoo on his chest. I remember having this moment of like, I shouldn't help you because you're garbage. But at the same time, it's not my job to judge you. I'm just here to help you. And so I was really torn between if I help this Nazi guy, am I in this, like, am I complicit in encouraging this behavior? Is it better for him to just die? So it's just like all this rushing through my mind. It's just like these real world applications of things that we talk about hypothetically. How would you react? At the end of the day, I went in there, I did my job and you know, my job is to help him and you know, that's the extent of it. But it was just, it's just, it was such a surreal feeling walking in and seeing this shaved head guy with a Nazi tattoo. And I just couldn't believe that. I remember coming back to the office, I was like, I, I, this is like the stuff that we only see in fiction. You know what I mean? So anyway, I don't know the premise of the movie. I don't know, maybe he liked the movie and that's why he got the tattoo. Maybe he's a straight up actual neo-Nazi. I don't know, but that was in real life, that was a surreal experience for me. Going into the movie, Edward Norton is a fantastic dramatic actor. He also does great comedy too. A lot of people underestimate him being a comedic actor as well. So I'm really looking forward to it. I, I don't know, based on the little description there, just like the description of the movie, if it's a story about redemption, if this is gonna be a story about a Nazi who gives up his neo-Nazi ways, but he's permanently scarred with the, with the swastika stuff, or, or, and you know, does he deserve redemption? Does he deserve forgiveness? So I'm guessing there's gonna be some, I, I don't know if that's how it's gonna be. Or maybe he's a good guy that becomes a neo-Nazi in prison to survive. I don't know what it's gonna be about. I would imagine that there's like uncomfortable conversations and uncomfortable real world applications and seeing the guy that I helped at the hospital that was either a neo-Nazi or former neo-Nazi, it's, it's tough, it's super uncomfortable when confronted in real life with that. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope it's gonna be good. I'm sure it will be if this one won the vote as far as uh, movies that I haven't seen, so I'm, I'm ready to get into it. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that because I'm super excited. It's a very powerful movie. I think everybody should see this movie for many different reasons. Edward Norton, I think this was, with, was the first movie that I saw him in. I just absolutely love him. So I'm excited for you to check it out. Can't wait. I think we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. How close am I on my premise? Was I getting, was I getting warm? Who's to say? Oh, oh, stop it. Don't you act like me. You it was appropriate. You gotta say the movie title. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it. American History X. Does this have anything to do with Malcolm X? No. Okay. Is it the story of a neo-Nazi who gives up his Nazism? Who's to say? I think that would be a really interesting way to go. I can tell, I'm getting close. Stop asking questions. All right, you're right. Just watch the movie. 
wonder if this is going to be like the sins of the past type of movie. I think he does a lot of bad things and then tries to reform or something. That looks like a day to night shot. I shot that in the daytime and put a filter on it. It looks like the house from Gran Torino. There's a black guy outside. He's breaking into your car. And is that the chick from Waterboy? What's going on here? It is! Jesus! But Mama Don't Know won't hurt it. That's gonna ruin her for me in this movie, I can already tell. Oh! Jeez, Edward Norton is like ripped in this. You're gonna like Bob, Principal Sweeney. It's a travesty arguing for Hitler as a civil rights hero. Ugh. He harbors some sick ideas, but I am not ready to give up on him yet. Oh, good for him. He learned this nonsense, Murray, and he can unlearn it too. I will not give up on this child yet. That's a great principal right there. Yeah, that's a good guy. He would think he would be particularly sensitive to the racist garbage of a mm. Nazi kid. Things at home okay? Yeah. Your rhetoric and your propaganda aren't going to save you out there. I'm your history teacher from now on. American history. X. Oh, that's Green why they call it that. Well, what do you want me to do it on? Your brother. <laughs> How these events helped shape your present perspective concerning life in contemporary America. I'll be the only one reading. What's wrong with you? You want to die? Such a clear, like, you don't mean anything. Sometimes everyone's a dick. Is that right, Falky? Gentlemen, this here is Dr. Bob Sweeney. Now, three years ago, a local kid named Derek Vineyard was sent up for murdering a couple of Crips. Protege of Cameron Alexander. Who? Cameron Alexander. We've been on this ben guy for years. Well. He's a Venice Beach landmark. He runs everything out of his house down by the beach. There were no white gangs in Venice Beach before Cameron Alexander and Derek Vineyard. His father died trying to put out a fire at a well, drug this house. Coming a haven for criminals, so what do you expect? Every problem in this country is race related, not just crime. Go around shooting at firemen. Oh, they shot him. He got shot by a drug dealer who probably still collects a welfare check. If something happens to him, Whew. things could get very ugly. When my dad moved us out here. Venice was a nice, quiet place to grow up. That that fool you were telling me about. Yeah, that's that money. Yeah, man, that's him. Oh, that guy. He's in a lot of stuff. He's in Brothers. A hundred bucks say I make you my bitch. After that, they became best friends. We play black guys against the white guys. <laughs> if we win, you pack up your and get your black asses out of here. Hey, man, take this bitch. Let's go. <laughs> Who's the ref? Is this a gang of skinheads? Be throwing f***ing elbows. That's why we need a ref. <laughs> this is so weird, like the way that they're presenting, like the music and stuff. Like, yeah, we did it. Well, I think there's another reason that they. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. It's just... I think it's also because it Three was a memory. But just one. Mm -hmm. The whole ride back, he didn't say anything. I wanted to stay home, but he said no, go to school. Too big to give me a hug, tough guy? No, man. I just know you're gonna, you know, need someone to look after you while you adjust all this space. <gasps> man, that dude's gotta go. And I don't know, the girls like it, so. Well, I don't. Did he, Should is he changed now? Man. But you know, man, when did you get that? I don't wanna give anything away. Peel yeah. the onion. <laughs> if he is, there's gotta be a sense of guilt that he made him like that. Like how he thinks he's like the top of the food chain. <sighs> with his type 2 diabetes and his giant truck with trash in it. I don't even care because I'm going to... See, now I'm participating in it. I, gotta, I shouldn't do that either. <laughs> Are you sure you can fit the fudge? Door? Fudge. You. Come out, you free mother... Fudge. Your vineyard, where the fudge f are you? No, I'll be out in a minute. He always comes over here. Danny, give me a minute. You still here, Goodyear? You call me a blimp, you fork. A Democrat. I hate anyone that is a white Protestant. The white oh, I hate anyone. Some of them are. Uh, right. None of them are. Remember what Cam said? We don't know and we don't want to know. I hate the fact that it's cool to be black these days. Good. 
I hate this. I know you don't believe any of that, right? You don't. Shut up, Davina! No, you shut the fork up. Get out of fork. the house now, you piece of shit. Derek hates you, and you don't even realize. Hey, hey, how do you know who I hate, Davina? Did you turn in a paper on Mein Kampf? Yeah. Did he tell you to do that? No, man, I thought it would be cool. I'm telling you, man, this... Was that Sweeney on the phone? Yes, don't... This is no, me. No, no, Sweeney's a good teacher, all right? He's Sweeney a good teacher, is a on a power trip, Seth, vineyard. Seth, go away. Go Are away. you kidding? Nope. Go wait in Danny's room. I want to talk to my brother. Is this change in him, like all of a sudden, are they aware that he doesn't seem to be as, you know, Hail Hitler-y? You'll find out the, the cause of it. Well, it's not the cause. I'm wondering if, if they know he's changed. I know they'll probably show his prison whatever happened, but I'm asking if his brother knows he's changed. He hasn't said point blank, I'm not a Nazi anymore. Oh, so he's not a Nazi anymore. I'm just kidding. I was picking up on that. But I'm wondering, like, why isn't the family being like, why? You, should be, really... you should be proud of me for writing a book on Mein Kampf. But he's like, stop. Straight up pulled a Paul the Apostle. A man spent time in prison and the new being. <coughs> I guess my question is, why isn't his family more surprised by his lack of racism? You'll see later the, the family aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Look, I need you to stay away from that, okay? But why, man? I thought we were gonna hang. Trust me, I will explain it to you later. I just need you to stay away from the party. Mm. It didn't take long for Derek to make a name for himself. And Cameron knew just how to use it. And everybody ate it up. They did whatever Derek told them to. There's over two million illegal immigrants bedding down in this state tonight. This state spent three mm. billion dollars last year on services for those people who had no right to be here in the first place. It's like nothing's changed in the two decades since this come out. Our border policy is a joke. We're losing our freedom so that a bunch of foreigners can come in here and exploit our country. We're on a battlefield tonight. Jeez. <laughs> What is this horrible? What's in the world, huh? That's horrible to watch. Dad was gone. Yeah. Most of the stores that were destroyed during the riots were owned by black people. That's stupid, though. I mean, why trash your own neighborhood? an expression of rage by people who feel neglected and... Calling a riot a, an irrational expression of rage, that's such a cop-out. White people commit crimes against white people, too. Yeah, but they're not offing each other in record numbers all over America. People have, you know, like a racial commitment to crime. Maybe it says something about prejudice in the judicial system. The media twisted things around so people got all focused on, you know, these cops. Everybody lost sight of old Rodney King himself. He attacked police officers, that's the bottom line, and he walked. Yeah, the video camera turned it on halfway through, so that all we see is them hitting him. Exactly. I think that the police used their clubs rather excessively. Who are you to say what's excessive? I think it was totally appropriate. Look who's talking about respect here, Mr. Junior KKK. Oh, what? Please. All this liberal nonsense, you know? Everyone's turning and looking the other way while our country rots from the inside out. Shut up! Oh, stop! She can't breathe! Oh, I hate you! Is he a Jew? Is that why he's looking at him like that? This is your family. Right, my family. My family. So I think he's looking at him for many reasons like that. Poisoning my family's dinner with your Jewish... Wow. See this? That means not welcome. And that was enough for him. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that you came out of my body. There you go, good. Jeez. He's gone. It's just a he also played uh, Monica and Ross's dad oh, sh <laughs> in Friends. <laughs> really hasn't changed much. Like, this came out, what, 98? Over half his talking points are like the Republican talking points. I wonder what like a standard Republican feels about that. Do they view that as like far right, we're not associated with that? We have conservative views, but that's too far? Or is it, you know, well, he's got some good points, you know? You know. I he's think also a Nazi. With regards to race, that's not something that they would align with. But I think with immigration, they would. Mm -hmm. So they don't like black people. They don't like Jews. Maybe I just can't, I can't really distinguish a Jew from a Gentile, typically. And Jews are typically pretty 
successful and can and contribute a lot. If he's like, we hate the Mexicans and black people because they are leeches. Well, but he's then, following the teachings of Nazis, though. I know, but I'm saying there's an inconsistency there. Of course there's an inconsistency. <laughs> what it really boils down to is we hate everyone and we need, besides us, because we're the greatest, and we need right. ways to justify our hatred. Right. When are you going to let that beautiful hair go back? The day you quit smoking. That's actually a good compromise. Y'all should both do that. I really want to see what happened to Edward Norton in prison. I'm going to teach you a real lesson now, motherfucker. Put your I'll... mouth on the curb. Oh, I've seen this parodied. Oh. It was a very controversial scene, obviously. Oh, come on. Oh my gosh. And absolutely no regret, like. Wow. This is so weird. It's almost like he wanted this to happen so that he had a reason to kill black people. Like he's like, like look how proud he is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was too much, for sure. Oof. Oh, give me a break with Hitler, come on guys. I don't forget how you can talk about how you love the, your love for the country, our country is so great, and then also idolize Hitler. We don't want anyone polluting our country, but then you idolize Hitler. When our country was arguably, you know, it's most like America, he was our number one enemy. It irritates me that they also are like, we're Protestants, as if Jesus wasn't literally the king of the Jews. I know that that was a mockery title, but well, this is gonna be awkward, isn't it? I wanna see you, okay, I do. But I'm not gonna take care of someone tonight. Leave all this. Just come with me. Why would you want to leave? I don't want it. I don't want my family involved. Everything I've done. This here is how you know this is like a sincere understand? conversion. I'm not scared. I don't want it anymore. Wow. It's bull, Stacy. Wow. Getting goosebumps. Good for him. You are nuts. No way. I wonder what a black person would feel like about this conversion. It's easy for me, I think, to be like, good for him for changing his life, but yeah. like it's how, I mean, that's gotta be a hard forgive for a black person, I feel like. I know you. You don't know anything about me, Stacy. That's how you know it's a real conversion. Well, if she's not aligning with his beliefs, yeah, he's and he's still departing from that. I mean, this this is like s biblical New Testament conversion of having stability in your life mm -hmm. and changing that based on a on a conviction that that's that's significant. That's a that's real. A few people get killed in the process. Let the kid alone, Derek. He knows when to go to bed. Go wait outside. Come on, dear. I'm not doing anything. It's only natural. You should feel a little funny. I don't feel funny, Cam. He thinks the joint messed with your mind. It did. Ooh. Wait till you see what we've done with the internet. They're not competing anymore, they're consolidated. Only we lack is a little overall leadership. I am done with it. All that bullshit out there and all your bull too. I'm out. I lost three years of my life for your phony cause, but I am on to you now, you snake. What is a, what is a chicken hawk? Is that a derogatory term? I have no idea. If you come near my family again, I'm gonna kill you. Well, excuse me, but you, Derek. He's not some whining pussy like you. Oh, he needs my help and I'm gonna give it to him. I will feed you your f***ing heart, Cam. <laughs> I'm yeah. more important to him now than you'll never be. Oof. Yeah. He's right about that. I do like that he is like still has some of that fire in him, you know? Mm -hmm. He's turned that racist energy yeah. into whatever this kind Directed of energy is. Directed in the right... <laughs> <laughs> whatever this is. I would be like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, yeah, the backlash. Oh, this is bad. Shoot it! Woo! Ah! God. Back up! Move! 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 Yeah, toss that. He really is uh, different. Relax. Relax. Who do you think you are? Take it easy. What's happened to you, Dare? Those guys, the gang, that life, I'm done with it. This is what I want to see. I want to see what happened. I wonder if it's going to be like a Jean Valjean type of con conversion. All the wrong people knew who I was anyway, so I figured I'm just gonna put up a flag and hope a friend sees it. <laughs> Did you ever see Key and Peel? Mm -mm. It's like my bald brothers. Right. The most dangerous man in this prison. You know why? Because I control the underwear. Come up over here, 
and we saw him over there. I think you're gonna like I this hope guy. you work out, all right? Because what you in for? Probably rob some old lady, huh? In the joint? You the n not me. I was a year in, then everything started getting complicated. What's that all about? Uh, it's just politics, man. It favors you. You kidding, right? Mitch is the only reason why you're not a corpse right now. Remember that. You know what? I don't give a sh I think you better chill out. That thing wasn't secured at all, was <laughs> it? Two or three years. Yeah, he's already been in for one. He's still the same. How's Danny? Danny. I'm trying to get through this and you're just making it harder. You think you're the only one doing time, Derek? You think I'm not in here with you? No matter how fast you get through a man, they're gonna keep bringing him in and bringing him in and bringing him in. What do I know? I know I ain't the one getting mad at them damn sheets, though. In fact, the only sheets I get mad at? I tell you. All right, boys, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hate some <laughs> That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna hate some God. That's the ticket. Nice and easy. Yeah, you got a woman, man. Let me give you some advice. Don't let her leave here in the fight, man. Don't let her walk out of here with a bad attitude. Wondering if she's out there getting her f on with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So if she comes in, send her away, float, all right? Because it's not like the real world. Because you can make up and have that make up sex. The good sex. It's that pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Don't you ever let me catch you. Yeah, yeah. I may forgive you if you bring it. I love you. <laughs> I was making a friend. Mm. Mm. The, the Lakers are like a flare-up, a fluke. This is a, this is good talking about sports, and this is why so, fandom can unite all kinds of people, except Star Wars. That, that just that just seems to keep separating. I can't even talk to you. I can't. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, man. I can throw these things, all right? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Whatever. whatever. All right? Come on, come on. Everybody in here is embarrassed. You think nobody in here got away with anything? Stole a TV from a store that was right next door to a donut shop, all right? Bam, I run into three cops, all right? <laughs> right next to a donut <laughs> shop. I told you it was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't, get, you didn't get six years for stealing a TV. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I go in the store, police officer grabs my arm, the TV falls on his foot and breaks it. They said I threw the TV at the office. Six years. Oof. Come on, tell the truth. Grab my arm, it fell on his foot. Yeah. I believe that. There you go, baby. There you go. Jeez. Oh, jeez. He's headed right where you are. Danny's not my responsibility, you know? What do you expect me to do with that? It doesn't help me. You're too damn smart to be floating around here pretending you don't see all the holes in this. Your anger is shutting down the brain God gave you. God, you know, man, you've been talking about what's going on in me since... Blame everybody. Blame white people. Blame society. Blame God. I didn't get no answers because I was asking the wrong questions. Has anything you've done made your life better? My help is not unconditional. <laughs> oh, that's so messed up. You can't make it in here on your own. Look, I'm not afraid of those f***ies, okay? And I'm not talking about your Peckerwood friends. They're protecting you. You dissed them in public. They're gonna come for me. They're gonna come for me. There ain't nothing I can do. Yeah, what a position to be in. So I was right back where I started. Black people want to kill him. White people want to kill him. Maybe the Mexican gang has an opening. It was a matter of time before they made a move. I couldn't figure it out because I knew some of them were itching for it. I read the stuff that Sweeney sent me and I kept to myself. The power of books. In that place I was like. What's up, man? You getting out? Come on, man. What the f you waiting on? Get the f on out of here, man. I got this funny feeling. Oh, yeah? What's that? And maybe the only reason I'm getting out of here in one piece is you. Come on, man, get the f out of here. <laughs> put my neck on the line for some crazy ass peck of wood. Stupid. I owe you, man. Man, you don't be right. Yes, 
Yes, I do. Just take it easy on the brothers, I right? The brothers! I'm lucky. It's just because I was pissed off. Nothing I ever did ever took that feeling away. It just got me more lost, and I'm tired of feeling pissed off, Danny. Yeah, good. Good for you, just... man. Whew! <laughs> Fox's toys. <laughs> Good for them. Shower, right? I guess I was expecting more pushback from Danny. More like, no, man, I devoted my life to this because of you. He did have a point in time where he was, more so. what are you doing? Yeah. Still say it started when our father was murdered. <laughs> but the truth is. Is that the dad from Boy Meets World? All right. Are we all meeting together for the game tonight? It is. Dr. Sweeney, this guy's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's, I've never had a teacher like this. He's got like two PhDs. I think it's like this, it's like this book about this black guy, you know? It's, it's, we're doing this whole black literature unit. Nothing. It's just, you know, it's everywhere I look now. Affirmative black chin. Honey. Affirmative black shin. All this stuff about making everything equal, it's not that simple. Look, when you gotta trade in great books for black books, does that make sense? Huh? See what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I don't know, I didn't think about it like that. Dr. Swing, he comes on like so strong, it's, it's kind of hard not to listen to him, but... He's boy. Good boy. Corey. But the mom isn't racist, is she? No. The mom and the sister are, I think, just not saying much, especially when the dad dies and it's just Derek and Danny. It's like he's being baptized. Or he really smelled. What did you say? He or he really smelled. <laughs> it could be both. Yeah, let's do something about that. That was probably one of my favorite scenes. Him putting oh. his hand over to replace it as if he didn't have that tattoo. Yeah, you get something to cover that. It's 5.40 a.m. We're gonna try to pick things up and start over. It won't be easy. I'm not sure if this paper is what you wanted. If I hit the social significance for what it's worth, thanks a lot. <sighs> Me, every time I do a tie. Dress up for the parole officer. Is she cute? She is a fat guy named Hector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Cool. We're gonna kill his brother, huh? Mm, something's gonna happen. Uh, maple bar and a large milk. Why do you think something's gonna happen? Oh, come on. Uh, We're gonna kill his brother. No? Okay, never mind. Okay, those guys are probably gunning for me now. Look, we're asking for who? Who are the two guys that got jumped? Seth, the big guy, oh. and Cameron. I mean, what do you? You know, I'm doing my best. You take a break, you find. No I mean, yeah, he, he was a big contributor. Stick. I'm asking you to do whatever's in your power to do. You, dude, you get me shot by a bunch of white boys. All right, yeah, I'm gonna take him to school. I'll be back in a half an hour. You got something good for me this morning? I'll give it to you, Doctor Smith. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm glad they're not dead, but other than that, I don't care. <laughs> I saw a car cruising by the house last night when I pulled out of there with Seth. Give a look around the street, all right? Make sure there's nothing going on. You gonna be okay? Yeah, yeah. Keep your head up, all right? Things are gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I'll see you at home. Fine. All right, I'll catch up with you, all right? Spider sense. Oh. Wow. Get out of my way! All right, all right, get out of my way! All right. Oh no! 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 Oh no! No! God, what did I do? Oh yeah. So I guess this is where I tell you what I learned. My conclusion. Oh yeah, I love 90s movies, I forget. Well, you're probably wondering how I got here. Hate is baggage. No passion may have strain. It must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory will swell when again touched. 
Oh, what a movie. All right, wow. All right, so we just finished American History X, and I have a lot to comment on this movie, but I'm gonna save it until I get Holden's thoughts. So what did you think of the movie? There is so much to unpack. This is such a sensitive topic, I think, because we're dealing with black people, we're dealing with Jews, we're dealing with white people, white supremacy. So, and a lot of this I feel like is still recurring talking points even today. You know, he's talking about the issues with immigration, we're talking about affirmative action. Uh, at the very end, the dad is like, you know, I had two guys that were trying to join the fire squad or whatever that scored higher than the black guys, but they got to join just because they were black. The guy in the prison who was like his buddy who sort of like humanized black people to him to some extent, looked out for him in the end, allowing him to get through without being killed. Although his crime was the murder, the gruesome murder of two black people, especially that curb stomp thing. But I will say I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, I, I know a lot of people are gonna hate this comparison, but this feels so much like New Testament Pauline like, you know, the Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. like a modernized retelling. This is like a modernized retelling of like the book of Acts, Romans, and like the Pauline letters of the New Testament. Super profound conversion. And that's what it is, let's be honest. It was a conversion of, of his like spirit of his self. Still held accountable for the sins of his past with his brother dying in the end. Because even after contrition, after repentance, after moving on from that, you're still held accountable for the, you know, for the things that you have done. And it's horrible that his brother had to essentially pay for what he helped contribute to. One of the scenes, probably the most gruesome scene was that rape scene that he had. Just like, th that was really, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I thought we were gonna come in there and just like beat him up and you know, but that was really tough to watch. There's a lot of scenes in this movie that were just like tough to watch. One of the signs of like sincere conversion is exactly what he did when he got out. He, his girlfriend, he was like, you know, he doesn't want to lose her. He's like, I want you to come with me. But she's like, no, and you know, starts calling him names and I'm not gonna do that. But he has to give that up. He's in a position of power and of respect in this in-group. Why would you wanna turn that up? You would only turn that up if your conviction and your conversion was sincere. And that's really profoundly powerful. And uh, I, I, loved, I loved seeing that. And you're right, the scene where he puts his hand over the Nazi symbol in the end, you know, wanting to see himself without it. I think another great thing this movie did is it talked about the complexity of these issues. It's not, Black or white, these are muddied issues. One of the things they talked about, they're like, he's like, it's been 130 years, hey, how, how long do black people have to get together? And, and how much of this affirmative action, I mean, shouldn't they be responsible for their own actions? And then they're also like, well, just look at the statistics of, of you know, the guys like, I dropped the TV on this, on this police officer's foot and they put me away for six years. That's not just. I'm like, that's, you know, that's true. There's all these different elements of like, well, you know, there should be responsibility. And yeah, they are they, they are discriminated against and there's uh, judicial things that are outweighed for black people and white people. And it's just this complex issue. I would love to hear uh, black people's thoughts on this because it's easy for me to be like, I love the contrition. I love the redemption and his conversion, but I wasn't the one targeted, you know? So it's is it harder for a black person to look at Edward Norton's character and be like, no, screw that. He killed these three. He's killed these two black guys who weren't even attacking him in his house. And he gets a he gets a pass if you want to consider what he went through a pass his death of his brother a pass you know so uh, these are tough things I, I know that this has always been sensitive but you know I I feel like in the past you know five ten years it's increased in its sensitivity all that to say I I loved it as a story of of redemption and a, a story of contrition and I couldn't help but see the Apostle Paul the entire time I watched this with Edward Norton it was it's a modern retelling of the Apostle Paul which is great you know because he went through Paul went through a whole bunch of crap as well and you know one of the thing I really liked about him because whenever he's like in like super Nazi mode and he's like he's super aggressive and he's super about this and he's super Alex Jonesy and then when he converts I was like is he gonna be a little bit more Captain America Steve Rogers type and he is to some extent but he's also there was that moment where he's talking to uh, Cameron I guess the uh, the Nazi leader and he's like no fuck you you know this is you know. So I'm like, I'm glad that he still retained, you know, that part of his personality. So anyway, all that to say, I loved it. I had a feeling you would, it would be up your alley. So I'm glad to hear that you did enjoy it. There's definitely a lot to unpack about it, but at the end of the day, I think the message is, as far as his character goes, you know, you can't change your mistakes. You can't do anything about that, but you absolutely can change what you do going from that moment forward. And unfortunately with this situation, he was interconnected with his brother. With Danny, he literally, you can see he's at that point 
where he could go one way or he could go the other. And it just so happens that that's the moment that Derek gets out of jail. So I really love that that's where they picked up because one of the moments that's really alluring to me is seeing what's gonna happen with Danny. And of course, he ended up getting killed at the end, but which road is he gonna go down? Is he going to follow the mistakes of his brother or is he going to learn from the place where his brother is now, which obviously is a better place. And so it really shows the power of their relationship. The fact, I think you commented, like I expected more pushback from Danny, but I think that that just shows how much Danny looks up to Derek, how much he respects him and believes him when he says something. And they did a great job of showing that. I also like that they kind of honed in on the flashbacks were black and white, which I I thought were very symbolic. There was a lot of good scenes in this movie. In particular, the one where Derek and his father, you could absolutely tell that that was the moment that Derek went down that road, you know, that his brother would in the future. Edward Norton was made for this role. I don't think there's anybody else that could have done it. Also, this movie is loosely based on an ex-skinhead. Mm. So that's, that's interesting to think, you, you know, I'm sure there's many people that have gone down this road, but I like the idea of having someone start out perceived as so far lost and coming back from that. And obviously he went to jail and had so much happen, but I don't think it was in particular one thing. You know, I think it was a culmination of everything. And that's another thing this movie did a really great job at, showing that all these little events that happened to him affected him in their own way. Befriending someone that is of a race that he is supposed to hate with everything within him. So seeing that develop, I enjoy. Also Sweeney, he was probably my favorite character next to Derek. Had the personality of, I'm going to be here, I'm going to try and teach you a better road. He didn't do it in a way where it was abrasive. You know, he did it, and him being a black man and handling it the way that he did and his interaction with both Derek and Danny, I thought was phenomenal. I really, really enjoyed his acting. I thought he was great. The ending, it was obviously very sad, but I, I think that it was perfect for this movie. I love this movie. I think it's great. I think everybody should see it. Obviously it has a lot of controversial issues in it, but you know, a lot of great stuff is. So I'm glad that you liked it. What would you rate American History X? This is gonna be one that I'm gonna have to, to think on. This is the type of movie that I know when we're done recording it, I'm gonna be like, why didn't I talk about that? Or why didn't I say that? I love the, the complexity of characters because they don't present white people bad, black people good, black people bad, white people good. Because in real life, it's much more complex than that. You have the black people that shot Danny, bad. You have Mr. Sweeney, probably, probably the most good character in the whole movie. Both all, you know, black people, uh, white people. You have white people who are like the sisters, the family are like, okay, enough, enough of this racist crap. White people who are like, uh, no, they screw black people, screw Jews, whoever. And in real life, it usually is more complicated than that. And that's just the reality of it. And it's easy, I think, to get stuck into this, well, black people over here, white people over here, when that's just not how it usually is. As far as a rating, this movie was really, really good. I don't really have any major critiques to it. I feel like the only real cr criticism or critique I would have is probably be Danny's character. I know I said before that he he's just going along with Derek, but you pointed out that Derek is just so influential over him. But I wish I would have, if that were the case, I wish that Danny had more, like was more of his own, he's not really his own man. You know, he just kind of does what Derek does. And so I wish that he was more of like, I wish we could have seen some more internal, internalizing struggle with him of like, I'm trying to live up to my brother. People see my see me, they see my brother. But you know, I really don't hate black people as much as I, I'm supposed to, or you know, I, or maybe I really do, but my brother is now telling me I shouldn't. So probably the one thing I would say, I would have liked to have seen more internal conflict other than I'm a skinhead because Derek is, he's out of prison. Now we're tearing down Nazi posters. That would be my only actual real criticism towards the movie. Other than that, it's great. Um, so I think I would rate this one, I think I'm gonna go with a nine out of 10.
a, a pretty solid movie. I also like the cuts between black and white and modern. I, I feel like maybe the black and white might have been on the nose, you know, and we're like, wow, that's sophisticated. When really I think it just helped distinguish the timeline that, okay, black and white is past and now. But I know that there's like a, oh, the black and white because black and white, you know. Anyways, so nine out of 10. I thought it was a great movie. I love the overall messages, you know, and they're not even that complicated. They're very simple, you know, simply, found someone that he had a connection with. That person just happened to be black. And so the fact that he can have those moments, you know, I like sports, you like sports. Um, it just shows that he had that moment where race did not matter. And so I like that they were able to kind of send that message through this movie. I don't have any complaints about it. I think it's a near perfect film, honestly. It has everything in it. I can understand where it would be too much for some people, but I think that it's a very powerful movie. I think I'm gonna go with a 10. A 10 out of 10? It's one of my favorite movies, I love it. Yeah, I feel like hatred is, is extremely easy. It's an extremely easy thing to do. It is so much harder to love and accept different than us. It's why racism exists in the first place, because we don't like different. There was this old black and white movie or show or something from way back in the day that talked about it, it was like, this guy was standing up talking against the Jews and talking against black people and he started talking against Catholics, talking against all these people and there's this popular quote that goes around. It's like, I didn't say anything when they went after the Jews, I didn't say anything when they went after the black people, I didn't say anything when they went after Muslims or Christians, uh, but by the time they got to me there was no one left. I was like, I, yeah, I agree with that. So, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much easier to hate. I will say one thing I hate, I hate, you know, just being as a, as a Christian person myself, that white supremacists claim Protestantism, claim Christianity, it irritates the heck out of me. To every extent, they don't follow Jesus the Jew, they don't follow his commandments. Black people are our enemies. You know what Jesus said about our enemies? We pray for them, take care of them, welcome them. So anyway, it irritates me because I know that that's how Christianity is perceived. So I hate that, but it is accurate. They do claim that. Anyways. I loved Sweeney. I, I mentioned that, but I really can't stress it enough. I loved his character so much. I love how influential he was to both brothers. And I know you mentioned before that you didn't really see Danny really push back or whatever, or question his beliefs, but I think that he did that with Sweeney. Yeah, you're right. He caught himself liking Sweeney. I don't want to say it was a playful relationship, but I think that he looked up to him. He respected him to a certain point. I think that was a moment where he was like, you know what, Sweeney's a good dude. Honestly, he didn't say that, but that's what he was thinking. Sweeney had this sort of like tough love. Right when he came on, you know, you know the personalities I'm attracted Five, to. Five, four, three, two, shut <laughs> the door. Well, he, the fact that he's like, I'm not giving up on this kid. And he knows that he comes from like a racist lineage through Derek and skinhead and everything. And he's like, I'm not giving up on this kid. And he never gave up on Derek either. So he he's probably the best character in the movie. Martin Luther King is like a personal idol of mine. I love him. Well, partly because we share the same religious beliefs. You know, I idolize him as a Christian. Like if I say like, I love Martin Luther King, uh, how much of that is, well, Holden's saying that because he's trying to virtue signal or something. But like I, I idolize Martin Luther King Jr. so, so much. And the more I learn about him, the more I see about like how he reacted to actual persecution, not like Christian nationalist persecution, but like straight up wrongly imprisoned, put in like the Birmingham jail, uh, the crap that people did to his wife and like, uh, and portrayed him to be. And he still persevered on top of that. I find that that's one of the most inspiring things ever to me. It's hard to be a white guy and talk sincerely because I feel like a lot of people think there's an ulterior motive. Maybe that's the best way to verbalize it. I love Sweeney. He's probably the best character in the movie. Anyway, that's what my whole Martin Luther King rant was. We are gonna get absolutely killed in this video. I already know it's coming. <laughs> this is gonna be a rough one, babe. But that's it. I'm glad that you liked it. We're gonna be moving on to the next film. I don't know what the next film is gonna be. I'll take a look, but um, you can always join Patreon and get early access to, we got Clone Wars on there. We got all kinds of stuff on there. So that's it. Take care. Have a good night. Nailed it.